Hey there, and welcome back to week six of Kyle and Maggie's Money Making Picks. Last week, not our best week, but we still broke even. At, we both went one and one. So on the season, Maggie's seven and three. I'm six and four. So we are thirteen and seven on the season. So it's doing very well still. So no worries about the two and two week. If it's the first time joining us, you certainly missed out on a good year so far. But it's not too late. It's only week six. So <laughs> if you if you haven't joined. We uh, both make two picks. We don't discuss it throughout the week, so by the time we get here, it's completely different. Like, we don't know about each other's picks at all. And if we have either of the same picks, then we'll only have three bets or possibly even two if we pick the same of both. So, without further ado, would you like to get started on week six? Sure. I don't feel as... Com I feel good about my picks, but I wish I had more to back it up this week <laughs> because, honestly, I just am kind of winging it on yeah. my gut feeling. So... My first pick for the week is the Bucks at the Cardinals, minus one and a half. I just feel like the Bucks are a better team. The Cardinals seem like they've really gone downhill since last season. So I just, and they keep losing more and more offensive weapons each week. So I am going, going with the Bucks. Bucks. I like it, I like it. My first pick, I usually really try to stay away from betting on my favorite team, but I'm going to this week, Packers minus three at Minnesota. He Even, finally came. <laughs> I, I really try to avoid doing that, but I just think the line's great. Even if Sam Bradford plays, we saw on Monday Night Football, he won't be 100%. So I really don't care who the quarterback is. So even if it is Bradford or if Bradford's out, they won't have Cook, obviously, because he's out for the year. Diggs got hurt. I don't think there's even close to enough weapons on their offense to keep up with the hot Packers offense right now. So I don't think that they can match point for point. Also, yes, Montgomery's questionable, but he did practice full yesterday, and they found Aaron Jones last mm -hmm. week, so I think their run game's much better than what it has been in the past. A couple numbers for you. The Packers are 7-2 against the spread in their last nine games against the NFC opponents, and they're 10-4 against the spread in their last 14 games overall. Meanwhile, the Vikings are just 2-5 against the spread in their last seven games, and 0-4 in their last four games in October against the spread. So I'm going Packers minus three, and I'm okay. It'll probably move up a little bit, probably to like minus three and a half or minus four, but I still feel safe with the Packers. All right, go Pack Go. Woohoo! Uh, my second pick, I picked the Bears at the Ravens plus six and a half. Okay. I think this is going to be a very ugly game. Um, we'll be traveling, so I don't think we'll watch this game. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I just feel like uh, the Bears... I don't really have a good argument for it. I just feel like uh, the Ravens have been awful, and I just feel like the Bears are kind of due for a break. And I'll give you they, a, And they yeah. played really hard. That's what it was. They played really hard teams. Yeah. Like, their first five matchups have been, like, it would be hard even for, like, a good team, a, a good yeah. team to win those games. So I'm just kind of rooting for them to finally get a win. Trubisky. Yeah. I think Trubisky's a big upgrade at quarterback. I think they, if they can get the uh, a lead early and run the ball, with their good run game, I think they really could keep it within six and a half points. They really do. Phew. <laughs> and my last pick is the Saints minus four and a half at home against the Lions. I've actually been on the Lions a bunch this year, so it's kind of shocking. Yeah. But nice. I really like this for the Saints. Um, until la like until garbage time last week, the Lions were just getting completely destroyed by the Panthers. Well, just two weeks ago, the Saints beat the Panthers by 21 points, and it was at Carolina. And then my number one point for why I'm picking this, I love this stat, is that the, the Saints are 8-1 against the spread in their last nine games at following a bye. That doesn't, always, that doesn't just tell you the preparation that Sean Payton puts into it, but it also tells you the, what him and Breeze put together. So it's like they've been together for all nine of those games, and they're 8-1 against the spread following this. And also, they are also 5-2 against the spread in their last seven games against Detroit. Stafford's a little banged up. Uh, the defense for... The Saints has only given up 13 points in their last two games. I really like this bet at minus four and a half for the Saints. I don't think a lot of the public will be on it because they know the Lions have been playing better this season. Don't really know. A lot of people don't really know what to think about the Saints, but I think actually getting rid of Peterson helps their offense because of that that's seven, eight carries. They don't have to give an old running back to just run into the back of the line. So I think the Saints cover the four and a half at home. Okay, interesting. Interesting. All right, well, thanks again for joining for week six. Hopefully we do a little bit better than uh, week five where we went two and two. But look, cheers to a three and one or a four and a week and good luck in your bets and your fantasy football. And please share on either Facebook or Twitter for more views. Thank you. Thanks.